applause to you and hats off thank you thank you so much sir it's all because of uh, your uh, blessings and uh, your passion towards teaching sir i understand that <laughs> oh, absolutely and i'm so proud and i thank the lord that okay, we have uh, our paths have crossed and uh, this path is uh, going to be a long journey for our relations uh, for the future as well yes sir sure sir and we are eagerly waiting for your presence in india sir it be an honor and a pleasure and i'm also i'm also thinking when we can safely come and come back and uh, meet again so i will be there i promise thank you sir in november we are having the ipa building opening and uh, we will invite you so please be our guest oh really now tell me what date i will be an honor and a pleasure no it is not at uh, confirm sir yes no, roughly yes yesterday we have uh, decided in the gp meeting that we will conduct it in the month of november okay so you let me know early please sure sure sir <laughs> really good yes sir. i may offer also um i'm hoping i can um, bring you a perhaps to associate with you and uh, um, give a donation as a prize to your top student sure sure sir i'll be very happy if you do that perhaps we could do that on the launch i'll be happy to um, thank you sir <laughs> thank you so much sir so if you are ready we start with the presentation part sir yes so i'm just thinking um let me see if i can share my talk with you Sure. I I don't know if, if uh, any of these will remember me. Were they still there? They will all have graduated now, no? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Some of them have graduated. Did you? Were you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, yes. sir. Uh, before starting, just uh, Roshni yeah, will I introduce us to the audience once within a minute. Yeah. yeah But I just make sure you can see my slides. Yes, sir. A very good afternoon to our respected principal, sir, chief guest, and respected faculty and students. We all have gathered here for the Pharmacist Day celebrations. We have Professor Mahendra Patil, National Pharmacy Research Lead, Principal Trial, Oxford University, International Fellow of IPA Patron of Commonwealth Pharmacy Association, Teaching and Faculty Member of UNESCO Department of Education and International Program of Bioethics, FIB Champion, Program Lead. and fellow of the royal pharmaceutical society moving further with the session now i would like to request professor mahindra patel sir to address the gathering over to you sir thank you very much and it's are you able to hear me yes, yes sir can enlarge yes. the slide um yes. i'm i'm going to try and share my screen um, good afternoon everyone wishing you all a very happy uh, world pharmacist day it's an honor and a privilege um to come back to you uh, and the college there um at uh, 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 viper and how it's so heartwarming and it, and i continue to receive the messages and look out for all the excellent work um that that is led uh, through uh, dr ramesh sir and and the team um and what you are all doing in terms of education and the excellent awards and recognition you are getting really it makes me feel very proud to see um institutions like yourself advancing and progressing so well so congratulations on this world pharmacist day today um i'm trying to um share my screen um but it's not letting can you see my screen yes sir we are able to see it no but can, i you can't see my slides can you yes sir we can see sir you can see the slides yes sir oh that's good if you can see my slides then here we go so what i'm going to talk to you about is my role at the university of oxford the world renowned uh, uh university um and with world renowned uh, clinical researchers 
and um, how pharmacy has helped and contributed during the pandemic um, in looking uh, at uh, treatment options for COVID-19 um, in the community. And the principal trial is the uh, a, is a platform trial um, which looks at um, COVID-19 treatment early in the community um, so that it can help prevent hospitalization and even death. Um, globally, there is yet a really substantial evidence-based treatment for COVID-19 symptoms. Whilst we have the vaccine rollout, as we all know, the vaccine is only there to prevent uh, people getting uh, severely um, uh, uh, affected by COVID-19 and even uh, reducing their chance of being hospitalized. We still need that magic treatment. Um, and so we need to stop people from getting into hospital. And until everybody are vaccinated, and, and that's a global problem that we have now, the global uh, 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 agenda, um, then until then we are all vulnerable in terms of um, um, contracting COVID-19. And as you know, India has been vastly uh, adversely affected, um, uh, particularly this year, um, but it continues to be with us. Um, and until everybody are vac vaccinated globally, then uh, we need to address that problem. So what we've found is that this is a, for people in the community and the principal trial is the largest phase three trial in the world and the most successful of its kind for treatment of COVID-19 symptoms in the community. And it's early symptoms. So this is where pharmacy can play a big part, um, particularly from a community perspective and particularly primary care um, is how we can stop people symptoms regressing where they may need hospital admission. As you know, sadly, and I've tried to help India, as, as of many colleagues uh, here in the UK, as we've done such a wonderful job um, in trying to support um, India in its plight in trying to fight the pandemic. And that's been ongoing for some time now. So the UK Indians have obviously contributed significantly in providing um, educational resources uh, 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 and other support, including financial as well, uh, through various uh, institutions, organizations um, that we have here that, that have done a wonderful job. This is a Department of Health finding. So the principal trial has over six and a half thousand patients recruited to this phase three trial. Um, and whilst we looked early in the stages at uh, um, um, hydroxychloroquine, and because of its safety, we stopped that. Um, but now, and but since then, we went on to look at uh, azithromycin and doxycycline. Azithromycin and doxycycline, as we know, are antibiotics. And how effective are antibiotics in the treatment of COVID-19 symptoms? We found on this trial that azithromycin, doxycycline, has no benefit compared to standard care for patients in the treatment of COVID-19 symptoms as a primary cause. So that has, the, the impact of this is huge because if you look at the world antibiotic, antimicrobial resistance uh, uh, and antibiotic resistance that we have, then that plays a big part in people unnecessarily using COVID uh, uh, antibiotics for the treatment of COVID-19 symptoms in a primary fascia. And perhaps this is something I'm reaching out to you as pharmacy colleagues um, in the institution as well as uh, uh, everywhere else, that we need to look at uh, and, and consider that and spread that message wider. So that was the brief 
Azithromycin should not be used in the management of confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infection within primary care or in hospitalized patients unless additional indication for which its use remains appropriate. And that was a recommendation from the uh, Department of Health, UK government, uh, and the, through uh, as an MHRA, the, the um, regulatory advisory body for the UK. Coming to doxycycline should not be used in the management of confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infection with, within primary care unless additional indications for its use remain appropriate. If you look at the bottom left-hand corner, this has changed policy guidance and practice within community and primary care for COVID-19 symptoms overseas. That is the guideline now adopted by AIMS ICMR uh, as part of the COVID-19 National Task Force uh, has been uh, and which is also now advising um, not to use um, 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 the, 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 the uh, some of the findings from the principal trial, um, but what could be good from the principal trial. And that moves me on to the, 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 the real uh, improvement and the success in the trial in, in addition to what we found for antibiotics. And we've seen in India that, you know, because India is so vast, that in the community, in, you know, that's where everything is happening and it's getting the messages out. As pharmacists, we are ambassadors. We are um, public health uh, uh, um, advocates in many ways and reaching out to those communities which possibly we can't always reach out to. So you play a big part um, in helping antimicrobial resistance agenda that uh, uh, unnecessary use of antibiotics uh, uh, could be, could be avoided. You will be familiar with budesonide inhaler. The one thing about the principal trial is that it doesn't use new drugs. It is repurposing established drugs for the treatment of COVID-19, as we've seen with azithromycin, as we've seen with doxycycline, as we did with hydroxychloroquine, which had stopped early because of its safety issues. Um, and since then, we went on to use uh, colchicine as well. But the budesonide is commonly available, relatively cheap, and it's used for the treatment of COPD and asthma um, uh, as, as a treatment option uh, regularly, uh, globally. And we looked at where how effective budesonide could be and looking at people 50 and over which was a target audience and though uh, with underlying conditions um, that is not currently a recommended a standard of care but can be considered on a case-by-case -case basis for the symptomatic COVID-19 positive patients age 65 and over or 50 and over with any underlying conditions like uh, diabetes or immunosuppressed uh, or, or cardiovascular disease, um, for example, um, in line with, with that statement. Um, and it showed that using inhaled budesonide, 800 microgram, micrograms twice a day for a period of 14 days can reduce the recovery time by a median of three days in symptomatic COVID-19 positive patients, age 65 and over or 50 and over with comorbidities. And a benefit in self-reported early sustained recovery at 28 days was also evident. So therefore we monitored these patients for up to 28 days. It wasn't just the symptoms improved by a median of three days, um, uh, but it also showed that that improvement was sustained uh, over a period of 28 days. We're now looking at that in terms of three months and six months and long COVID, and we'll be publishing the results of that in due course. That is the breakthrough on a phase three trial. 
That is the recommendation from AIMS uh, as well now adopted as guidance as the ICMR um, task force. It is also adopted in guidance in the British Columbia and in Canada and in other parts of the world. Really. I put on the right hand side, this was also because in the UK, people of uh, uh, South Asian origin um, was also more affected than the white um, British people here that we have. And because they were more affected, it was important that we reach out to those communities. And the Swaminarayan Temple um, in London, which is regarded as Britain's most influential Hindu temple, joined in, in promoting the principal trial. And as you can see above it, that became the top news item across all the University of Oxford colleges on that day when they joined forces. So on that note, my wish is everybody to stay safe. For all the work that you're doing, congratulations. We continue to do more. There is still more to look at. We haven't stopped with the trial. We are now looking at favipiravir, an antiviral, and we are looking at um, ivermectin in terms of how effective that can be in the COVID-19 symptoms and, uh, and uh, there will be reporting on colchicine which we've also seen but now stopped because uh, we've found the evidence um, and, of, uh, and we will share that in uh, publications soon. This is you know, presented in world-renowned journals uh, uh, medical journals, top journals in the Lancet, for example. Um, so all, all the evidence is there. Um, but my, my wish to you is to stay safe, promote the messages as pharmacists you can. You can play your part in the COVID-19 pandemic. You can be proud that you have uh, uh, played a significant part in supporting and protecting your loved ones, your families, but also communities uh, wider uh, and even globally. Um, and I continue to reach out for you to work uh, and share, uh, and I'll be presenting these findings work further with you in due course as well. So happy World Pharmacist Day to you all. Thank you for giving me the, uh, the pleasure, and the, it's the honor to be presenting with you today and sharing uh, this auspicious day with you all. And I hope to be visiting you in person. Keep on doing the wonderful work that you're doing. And I, I, I hope to speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Pleasure. And I would like to once again, thank you for your valuable time. Early in the morning, I know you have been participating in very uh, important programs. And that shows your passion, waking up at the five o'clock and delivering the talks. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you so much. And we wish to meet you in person. You know. Thank you, yes. sir. And I look forward to seeing you. And I hope uh, um, I hope we can meet in your uh, inauguration day as well. Sure. But let's keep in touch. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can we start the next presentation? Two minutes, sir. Okay. I will just say hello, okay? Sir, uh, 
A very good afternoon to our respected principal sir, chief guest, respected faculty and students. We all have gathered here for the Institution Innovation Cell Impact Lecture Session. Objective of this session is to sensitize and motivate the students and faculties to pursue the innovation and startup during their academics. Institution Innovation Cell conducts many impact lecture sessions. Ministry of Education selected and sponsored our institute to conduct this session. Session. I would like to thank Ministry of Education and Institution Innovation Cell for providing this opportunity. Moving further with the session, now I would like to request our principal, Dr. A. Ramesh, to address the gathering. Uh, warm welcome to you, sir. Very good afternoon. And it's our uh, pleasure for uh, having you, sparing your valuable time on this auspicious occasion. We wish to look forward uh, and uh, at early notice, I hope uh, we'll come and personally also meet you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful time. And we wish to take very good feedback and we wish to learn from you. Thank you so much, Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Pandabritim Sahu is currently working with the Center of Entrepreneurship Development and Financial Inclusion. National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj, Hyderabad. He holds a PhD degree in economics from the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. He was a visiting member at Korea Institute for International Economic Policy, South Korea. His research interest includes issues related to enterprise and entrepreneurship development, skill development, labor and employment. His ongoing works include the smart village, rural homestay and tourism, workers in labor addas and service sector employment. He has been associated with a number of research studies sponsored by international and national agencies. His prior works appear in repeated international journals such as International Journal of Occupational and Environmental Health, International Journal of Psychology, Journal of South Asian Development and National Journals. Economic and Political Weekly, the Indian Journal of Labor Economics, Indian Journal of Agricultural Economics, Sarvekshana, Labor and Development, Kurukshetra, etc. Currently, he is also a member of the Editorial Advisory Board of Journal of Rural Development of NIRDPR. Now I request Dr. Padrapratim Sahu to present his presentation on Ecosystem for Sustainable Entrepreneurship Development. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon. I thank the principal and all colleagues and all the participate, participants who are listening to me and Dr. K. Banita ma'am for this invitation. Would you like me to share the PPT and speak or without PPT? Sir, please share the PPT, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you. And I will switch off my video because the when internet is not so good. Sometimes it goes away. Okay. Sir. When I, after I finish the session, when we will have Q and A, that time I will switch on again. Okay. Sir. So, is it visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much again. And as discussed with Dr. K. Banita, ma'am, I'm, I'm going to spend some time on ecosystem or enabling for sustainable entrepreneurship development. And as you all know, the kind of time, critical time that we are facing now, we are passing through because of this COVID pandemic and pandemic led prolonged and intense lockdown. So providing variety of livelihood approach, livelihood opportunity through self-employment, through enterprise development or otherwise. So creation of employment, all these are very important, both in rural and urban area and for which the ecosystem or a facilitating environment or enabling environment is very important. So I am going to focus on that, how a strong, robust, data-driven, evidence-based ecosystem is necessary for sustainable enterprise development in our country. 
and which will not only uh, create livelihood and employment opportunity but also he will see how the young generation will be engaged in different kind of startup their skill will improve the uh, and their earning all that will improve so overall for the country for a developing country like india this entrepreneurship opportunities entrepreneurship avenues is very important and it has become even more important because of this covid pandemic you have seen how there is a huge job crisis new empl uh, employment opportunities are not coming up in such a situation we have to think beyond this employment so this self employment uh, enterprise development all these are going to be very very, very crucial in the times to come so and for that ecosystem is very important so i am going to share some thoughts on what is the entrepreneurship landscape look like what kind of enterprises we have in india what is the rural scenario what is the urban scenario what are the key challenges towards sustainable enterprise development and during this covid era what may have what has happened to the enterprise sector to the small big enterprises and we have got large number of schemes and programs not only from central ministries but also from the state government so i will also uh, tell you little bit about the schemes and programs that we have the existing schemes and the new programs which were announced by central government and state government especially during this pandemic era and how what is the ingredient of this robust ecosystem so before that we must ask ourselves do we have an ecosystem now and what are its goal what are the different agencies institutions line department who are associated with this ecosystem or facilitating environment is it inclusive the ecosystem that we have does it create adequate entrepreneurship opportunity for all sections of the society for gender for economic socially marginalized communities like scheduled caste and scheduled tribe for youth so is it inclusive and whether our ecosystem or facilitating environment is one size fit all or there is scope of customization on tweaking so you will see many of our central government schemes are designed in delhi without taking cognizance of the local conditions so there is a huge mismatch between the kind of policy being formulated and the need of the sector and the need of that area need of that time so there is a huge mismatch so customization in the ecosystem or enabling environment is also very important and what are the different attributes components features of a good ro uh, ecosystem that i will discuss so if you will see this entrepreneurship development debate discussion that is going around in last 3 4 decades in, uh, in all developing countries including india this four s is very important start survival scale up and also sustainability all these four s are very important and for all these four we need a very good uh, conducive uh, enabling environment a strong ecosystem then only we will be able to meet the kind of challenges that our enterprise sector or entrepreneurship uh, or entrepreneurs are facing there are large number of issues which are directly or indirectly related to this enterprise development or sustainable enterprise development issues related to human capital development issues related to technology in innovation incubation <coughs> access to finance and implementation of uh, schemes and program the whole issues related to uh, governance so you will see all these are part of that ecosystem and a good ecosystem will be Uh, one which will empower which will encourage both aspiring and existing entrepreneurs not only to start new enterprises but also to scale up grow graduate the existing ones and a good ecosystem also allow better implementation of government schemes and programs so that that's what i am referring to that a, how a good ecosystem is necessary for sustainable enterprise development 
and for that we have to take account of all these factors training capacity development the whole issue of rules regulation compliances uh, training access to market access to finance uh, all kinds of issues are uh, related to this uh, the issue of sustainable enterprise development and if we'll see our india's enterprise sector or india's industrial sector if you will see a large part of our enterprises are solopreneur all small scale industry is dominated by this one man one women enterprises they run inside the household premises they do not hire any worker from outside they take help of family labor so you will see 70 80% of india's this small enterprises especially msme enterprises are solopreneur one man one women enterprises and unfortunately this solopreneur are neither innovative nor significant job creator that's why a robust facilitating enabling environment is necessary so that it will grow and create more and more employment and our enterprise sector also operate in a very highly informal setup they do not have id proof they do not have registration number they may not have aadhar number they are not able to access the formal institution they are not able to get a bank loan and like that so they are out operating outside the ambit of formal institutions there are large number of formal institutions a little later i will tell you but unfortunately these enterprises are not able to they are neither aware of these institutions and even if they are aware they are not able to access the variety of benefit schemes programs that institutions are offering so that is a very big problem and as i said we do not have growth path or graduation path many of these enterprises are starting as small running as small and they are either dying or at the same scale so we are not able to see scale up these enterprises are unable to scale up unless there is a graduation path unless these enterprises grow graduate and scale up it will not generate employment opportunity in fact which is the need of the hour so these micro enterprises in fact are to grow as small than medium than large but that is not happening and entrepreneurship policies there are variety of schemes and policies that we have not only from the central government ministries but also from all state government ministries but most of these entrepreneurship policies suffer from serious weaknesses like these are largely supply driven or target driven so the ministry will tell you that you have to create 100 entrepreneurs during 2021 and the implementing agency will find out tom, some tom dick and harry and they will start uh, creating same kind of enterprises let's say a small grocery shop or a sewing machine or something like that so that is not a sustainable solution so it is very important to do a very good homework of that area context the the beneficiary or the aspiring entrepreneur that you are going to support he or she has to be suitably selected and see that she has got entrepreneurship aptitude but that is not happening that's why many of the government induced scheme, scheme induced entrepreneurs or uh, people they lack entrepreneurial talent and that is why most of the scheme induced enterprises they are suffering losses they are closing down or they are unsustainable so that is very important and whenever we talk about enterprise development we also have to talk about skill financial inclusion jobs and skills so all these are closely interlinked so while formulating any policy for enterprise development we also have to take account of all the skill financial inclusion and employment generation so this is very important if you will see the pandemic time uh, as you all will agree with me the kind of challenges that we are facing it has gone beyond a simple health crisis and education crisis but if you if, if, if we can call it as a humanitarian crisis and if you will see the enterprises 
especially the small medium enterprises they are facing three different kind of challenges first during lockdown all these enterprises they shut down they close down their production so the first challenge is to restart reactivate these activities second is to go back to the pre covid period when there was no lockdown no covid i was earning 100 rupees per month but due after this covid my profit has gone down to 20 or 25 so my second challenge is to go back to that level of 100 and also the third and most important challenge is to future planning to grow further to expand further so this is very important and for all this uh, we have got schemes programs institutions department i will tell you and still how come we are still asking this question that our enterprises are not sustainable not remunerate although this pandemic and pandemic led lockdown has thrown lot of challenges but it has also taught us lot of lessons the importance of family has uh, improved the importance of local economy has improved many of you must have read how the central government is advocating vocal for local so how the demand for local products local entrepreneurs how they can be encouraged how we can boost domestic demand etc etc so in this pandemic time the new narrative that we have seen that more and more focus is on local economy uh, local entrepreneur and this pandemic has also taught us to take different kind of adaptability and coping strategies how to respond to a this such crisis so small enterprises they have undertaken different kinds of steps responses coping strategy to meet the kind of challenges that covid has thrown before us and most important the women led women owned enterprises have in fact emerged as a big safety net for the whole family because you know in special rural area the male member Uh, they had gone to urban area urban locations for work and we have seen how millions of reverse migrant they walk down to their uh, respective destination so but this reverse migration is also not only a challenge but also an opportunity so a big cadder of youth skilled people have come back to rural area from urban area so if you can map their skill if you can accommodate in our rural Uh, development activities so it will be uh, a big opportunity so reverse migration is not only a challenge but also in opportunity but we have to work towards that we have to make a plan for that so so the most important question in the enterprise development discussion especially rural in in developing countries including india is that is the enterprise commercially viable if it is commercially viable it is viable at a reasonable scale and can commercial viability be translated into regular remunerative income so this is the dimension of that sustainability enterprises are being created either because of schemes or because of self initiative people are taking loan from banks and friends and relatives they are trying to start new enterprises but the question remains the million dollar question before us is whether it is, is it scalable whether it is remunerative and whether it is sustainable so these are the important dimensions of that sustainability question for which we need a robust ecosystem and during this pandemic time the enterprise sector the msme sector where they were they were facing lot of trouble and during this pandemic time maybe many of this uh, constraint many of these difficulties uh, may have aggravated may have accentuated and even now we have seen in many parts of the country lockdown has been lifted there is a lot of uh, activities have already started but still we see uh, in many parts of the country small enterprises medium enterprises have even not yet started their business maybe imagine a small road side vendor where that fellow was operating operating that place might have been hijacked by someone else working capital 
is a very big problem the small enterprises are still facing lot of problems related to working capital regain the old customers so imagine a small shopkeeper if he or she will close the shop for longer time duration the customers who were buying from that uh, shop will go to some other shop so it is a, also a big uh, challenge for that shopkeeper how to regain those old customers how to attract new customers and all these problems have cropped up during this pandemic time and new new regulations new government orders are coming every other day high yield is related to hygiene it related to law and order and all that so all these enterprises who are operating in rural and urban landscape they also have to follow these rules and regulations and for a solo entrepreneur for a one person enterprise uh, how how can he or she can spend money time on all these compliances so you can imagine so the pandemic lockdown has not only thrown business related challenges but also it has thrown lot of psychosocial challenges including mental stress low aspiration anxiety and depression etc etc so all these kinds of problem we have seen uh, for this small medium enterprises sector we have seen lot of uncertainties lot of market fluctuation especially in urban area when people have gone back to their rural area the msme unit which are operating in urban area they are uh, not not finding skill labor and because uh, these people have gone back they have not returned not yet returned so urban located enterprises are uh, witnessing the problem of shortage of skill labor the cost of raw material has also increased many of you those who are following newspaper what is the cost the price of petrol the price of steel everything has gone up and during this pandemic time many of the schemes programs were also could not be oper- uh, implemented so people small scale unit who were depending on schemes and government schemes and programs they had suffered a lot their situation may have worsened because of this lockdown so and small scale unit uh, you know they may have got unsold stock piled up in their unit so there are so many problem and one of the important problem that many of you will agree with me that huge delayed payment this small enterprises micro enterprises they are all complaining about delayed payment they have not received the payment due from the buyer whether it is large enterprises or government sector enterprises or people who are uh, working in the export they all those export oriented enterprises their order might have cancelled they may not have got the payment and all that so there is a large variety of problem which msme was already suffering and many of those and uh, problems might have accentuated aggravated but as compared to 2020 in 2021 things may have improved we have seen lifting of uh, lockdown back back to business we are able to see then good news that vaccination has aggressively begun market has also started responding i am not talking about stock market i am talking about real market transport logistic which were completely stopped that has also resumed the whole supply chain value chain we have seen some the difficulties disruption in supply chain value chain may have uh, have started moderated this implementation of schemes and programs have also started and in 2020 uh in response to this covid all kinds of schemes programs a big relief atmanirbhar uh, package was also announced by central government to boost the whole msme package 20 lakh crore package relief package was announced by central government and this is an appropriate time to assess whether people have got any kind of benefit from that msme package uh, so uh all these questions are very important uh, those who are not familiar the kind of data that we uh, get from uh, get on enterprise sector there there is a ministry called ministry of msme and they bring out report called all india census of micro small medium enterprises so uh, 
those who are interested to do some kind of research on this enterprise sector they may they will get data but you can see the last data that is available from ministry of msme is 2006 7 but there is another organization under ministry of statistics and program implementation called nsso national sample survey organization they also bring out lot of statistics on enterprises so those who are interested they can uh, look at it so the key question that i am trying to focus on is that ecosystem or enabling environment so what are the key pathways key ingredients of that robust ecosystem or enabling environment i am now going to uh, focus one by one on those ingredient one is formalization as i said our enterprises sector operate in, in informal setup they are not able to Uh, they are not aware of formal institutions they are not able to access the benefit schemes of these formal institutions so how to bring this informal enterprises to the formal setup that is one way second platformization so the importance of digital devices uh, e commerce e marketing all these has become more important so and if i, I will let us say how to provide all kinds of schemes and programs now it enabled portals are being created dashboards are being created websites are being created you need a loan you uh, create a login password register then on online you will get loan then another important aspects of the ecosystem is mentoring and hand holding the msme sector the enterprise sector they need regular and continuous mentoring and hand holding not only related to business but also related to psychosocial problem as i said related to problem like mental stress anxiety depression and all those may have increased during this pandemic time i will also tell you what kind of different enterprise development models that we have in our country then i will also tell you the how what is the role of collectives many of you must be familiar about uh, the farmer producer organization producer company that is also an important er ingredient of this uh, ecosystem training and capacity development is also an important uh, component of the ecosystem ball because all those officials uh, who are responsible of implementing the schemes and programs related to enterprise development they also need regular capacity development training etc etc so training and capacity development is also an important component of that robust ecosystem so let me start with formal institutions many of you must be familiar that in india we do have a wide network of formal institutions on each and every theme be it related to marketing finance incubation business development services business uh, training and capacity development think of any aspect of enterprise development there are corresponding formal institutions so if you can see the monitor on your screen now there is a large number of government institutions department who are responsible for sustainable enterprise development we have more than one ministry ministry of micro small medium enterprises ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and there are many other ministries so there are as many as 20 ministries in the central government who are implementing more than 70 80 different kinds of schemes and programs which are directly or indirectly related to enterprise promotion so we can you can imagine the kind of institutional architecture we have for sustainable enterprise development but still there are concerns there are areas of problem there are uh, difficulties and how those difficulties can be addressed so there are uh, many organization like this development commission many of you must be familiar about khadi and village industry board khadi and village industry commission micro small enterprises facilities facilitation councils so there is no dearth of formal institutions but unfortunately Uh, especially the msme units are neither aware of not being able to access the kind of benefit schemes programs that they are giving Tra so far as the training and capacity development is concerned my own institute national institute of rural development is also a training and capacity development institute which is providing a variety of training program to this uh, professionals 
these people, these officials who are responsible for implementation of schemes and programs. We have got National Institute of Entrepreneurship and Small Business Development in New Delhi. We have got Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship at Guwahati, National Institute of Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises in Hyderabad. Then we also have National Skill Training Institute for women in 11 centers in India. So for training, we have a set of institutions. For uh, finance related issues, we have a large network of commercial banks, SBI, uh, Oriental Bank, etc., etc. But especially for enterprise promotion, each of these commercial banks has one or two loan product, financial product. Besides that, to meet, to cater the needs of MSME sector, there are banks like Small Industry Development Bank of India. There are banks like NABAD, National Bank of, for Agriculture and Rural Development. So there is no dearth of schemes and programs. But Unfortunately, you can get a lot of paper, uh, research paper, journal articles on that, that A, people are not aware about these formal institutions. B, even if they are aware, they are not able to access the kind of benefit schemes program that these formal institutions are providing. So how to encourage this MSME or small enterprises to be part of this formal network? One is to aggressively sensitize awareness campaign, uh, inform people, disseminate information about these formal institutions So and the schemes and program. Second, our entrepreneurs, small, medium entrepreneurs, they are not adequately skilled and educated. So the capacity development of this aspiring and existing entrepreneur is also important so that they will come forward to be part of these formal institutions. So now they are fearing, they are apprehensive whether to be part of formal institution, whether we will lose something, whether we are going to suffer losses, etc., etc. Then from the other side, from the department, from the institution side, we have to simplify all this regulatory process. Even now, if you want to open, start a small enterprise, you may have to go 20 offices. You may have to take 10 kinds of different licenses. You may have to spend a month or six months to get all this documentation work. So how to eliminate this unnecessarily documentation, this uh, procedures, cumbersome procedures, and this we have to uh, work on this ease of doing business. Many of you must have heard about this ease of doing business. So the simplification of this business regulations process, uh, regulatory compliances, rules and regulations. And this is going to uh, be an important challenge for this robust ecosystem. Then only uh, we can think of uh, sustainable enterprise development. As I said before, there are a large number of schemes and programs. If you can see on your computer screen now, there are ministry of there, there is Ministry of Rural Development who have scheme uh, for enterprise promotion called Startup Village Enterprise Program. Many of you must be familiar about NRLM, National Rural Livelihood Mission. Under that also, so many kinds of farm and non-farm livelihood opportunities, schemes, programs are there. Ministry of MSME, they also have got so many schemes and programs. And one program is there especially for traditional artisans, crafts, traditional industry group called Scheme for Fund for Regeneration of Traditional industries. You may be aware how weavers, artisans, craft, traditional industries, over the years they are uh, suffering like anything. Their uh, livelihood is at stake. Some of the weavers, they are failing to meet, respond to the competitive challenge, market uncertainties, and they are leaving this occupation and working as a daily wage worker. So you can imagine. These are uh, skilled worker, they are karigar, they are producing very rich quality products which has got huge demand both in India and outside but there is no strong support system for these artisans. So for them also there are schemes like spruti, there are schemes like upgrading the skill and training of traditional arts, crafts for development under the Ministry of Minority Affairs. 
Besides that, there are so many schemes, programs run by Ministry of Agriculture to promote agripreneurship. Then there are Ministry of Food Processing Industry, KBIC, Khadi Village and Industry Commission. Uh, so many departments, ministries, state government department. So there is no dearth of departments, institutions. There is no dearth of schemes and programs. Still, we are struggling to address the question of sustainability. So that we have to understand. In this pandemic time, just uh, maybe a few months back, Ministry of Food Processing has announced a program called PM formalization of micro food processing enterprise. So how the informal small micro food enterprises can be brought under formal institutional network. So they are providing training, capacity development, handholding support, and they are increasing, they are providing increased access to credit to the existing micro food processing entrepreneurs through technology upgradation. They are also supporting farmer producer organizations, self help group, etc. etc. So, if you will see this program, this scheme has been designed to provide support so that the enterprises which are operating in, in an informal setup to take them to uh, transgend them to a formal institutional framework through registration process through uh, regulatory framework etc etc so that if they will part of these formal institutions they will have better access to market they will have better, better access to bank loan they will have better market outreach so this is the key aim of the schemes and programs the second important component of this robust ecosystem is platformization. As I was telling, the more and more schemes and programs are now being offered on IT enable portal. So, you know, now electricity bills are being paid on online. If you want a bank loan, you can submit a application on online. So, for enterprise promotion also, the schemes and programs are now, the support services are now offered on this IT enable portal. So, uh, for example, there is a portal called MSME Sampark portal to provide digital platform to connect job seekers with those enterprises who are seeking trained human resources. So if you are planning to start an enterprise, you are looking for a specific kind of skilled worker, you just register in this MSME Sampark portal and you will be get connected with different kind of worker with different kind of skill sets. There is a portal called MSME Samadhan to deal with the grievances related to delayed payment. So if you have a uh, issue related to delayed payment, your buyer is not making payment on time. So you can put your grievances on this portal and that grievances will be redressed. So there are all kinds of different kinds of portals are now being created especially to promote women entrepreneurship niti ayog which was previously known as planning commission they have come up with a portal called women entrepreneurship platform where they are providing support related to networking uh, funding financial assistance incubation and acceleration compliances and tax assistance entrepreneur skilling and mentorship and also marketing assistance so the narrative has changed so now more than one support more than one uh, schemes are now provided on a single platform on a single window so this is the new change new kind of narrative that we are observing so similarly for socially and economically marginalized communities uh, like scheduled caste and scheduled tribe they also have got a portal so uh, those people, people from those community, they can log into this National Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe Hub a portal and they will get all kinds of support relating to registration, uh, how to formulate a bankable business plan, uh, finance, uh, bank linkages, market linkages, etc., etc. So this is the new change that we have seen in the sustainable enterprise development. One portal which all of you will be interested to know is especially the students that there is a portal called MSME idea portal. So if you have a sub entrepreneurial idea, you want to start a new enterprise. So you 
browse this website log in to this portal you will see if you can submit your idea you will be get connected with uh, marketing support uh, financial support from banks marketing support mentoring and handholding support so all kind of support you will get on this msme idea portal and this msme idea portal also will give you the all schemes and programs announced not only by central government but also by the all state governments all those schemes and programs you will also find on this msme idea portal so i request students also faculty member who are taking classes on enterprise development they should use the huge resources that this portal has so it is very useful websites uh, for all of us then not only uh, government organization not only ministries government departments but uh, towards this digital empowerment of enterprise entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs entrepreneurship development or digital empowerment of entrepreneur not only government department but also private sectors have also come forward for example uh, the google in association with fiki federation of indian chamber of commerce in india and indian school of business they have come up with a initiative called digital unlocked and they are trying to provide the uh, capacity and training so to equip the startup the small medium enterprises and innovator the necessary skill for utilizing the power of internet they are helping uh, the entrepreneur to create online presence launching their product on the e-commerce portals and so that they will reach out to a wider audience their sales volume will increase and uh, they can keep a consistent connect with the potential customers so this kind of initiatives are also there and the teachers and all those who are uh, associated with different kind of schemes and programs they should Uh, read about these schemes and programs and try to help uh, small micro entrepreneur who are not educated enough and if uh, we can tell them look this kind of schemes and programs are there with us and i will help you to get benefit from these schemes and programs so there are so many schemes and programs not only from the government sector but also private sector mentoring and handholding is an important component of Uh, this ecosystem but many in many of the developing countries including india you won't see there is a complete missing of mentoring and handholding in our entrepreneurial ecosystem there are organizations uh, institutions like recently reserve bank of india is in one of its report they have recommended that all commercial banks they also have to provide mentoring and handholding support to both existing and uh, aspiring entrepreneur so then there are organization like uh, rural self employment training institutes district industrial center and the industry association like fiki cii it is their responsibility to what extent they are doing it is a question mark but there are uh, institutions who are responsible for providing mentoring and hold holding but unfortunately uh, we don't see that both rural and urban entrepreneurs are getting any mentoring and handholding support which is very important during this pandemic time and there is a new program which has been announced by the ministry of tribal affair in partnership with facebook so all of us are familiar about facebook so the program is called goal going online as leader in this program they are trying to help tribal youth and all the identified tribal youth will be given a smartphone and an internet connection for one year and they will also be connected with a mentor so on this online through online process this identified youth tribal youth are going to learn different skills related to digital literacy life skills leadership and entrepreneurship and they are supporting this tribal youths to start some kind of enterprises on in the field of horticulture food processing beekeeping tribal art medicinal herbs all that so and uh, i would request some of the faculty member can also register themselves as mentor and they can help 
some tribal youth to start business so those who are interested they can uh, log into this uh, they can find out more information on ministry of tribal affair website collectives the role of unionization the role of collectives is very important so a single msme unit uh, operate at at a scale disadvantage situation so if you can unionize if you can collectivize this uh, large number of small micro entrepreneur then they will not only get scale advantage they will get better bargaining power and they will have strong presence in the market so this self help group the farmer producer organization uh, many of you must be aware about this common facility center so every small scale unit cannot buy a big machine so the common facility center where the small little machines can be installed and all micro small entrepreneurs of those locality can come to this common facility center and do little bit processing and uh, they can get their work done so this kind of access to shared services is going to be very important for sustainable enterprise development i will give another example many of the rural located small entrepreneurs may not be having smartphone they may not have got computer they may not have got internet so why not the panchayat office can install a computer where all these entrepreneur including women entrepreneurs self help group women they can come and they can take the benefit of the schemes and programs which are now available on dashboard or it enable portal or website so these collectives farmer producer organization pro producers companies common facility center cluster development program all these are going to be very crucial for sustainable enterprise development so that is very important i also told you that i will share the kind of enterprise development model that we have in our country i will share one model which is which is implemented by uh, the ministry of rural development so there is an entrepreneurship development model called community resource person led entrepreneurship program so in this crp led entrepreneurship development program uh, a cadre of crp community resource person mostly women they are first trained and these trained women identify aspiring women entrepreneur and these trained women they provide skill not only related to business but also related to psychosocial and and they also provide mentoring and hand holding till the enterprise stabilizes let's say for 6 months or 1 year so uh, many of you must be familiar about the kutumbasri in kerala there is an ngo called pradhan uh, there is an ngo in gujarat called seva so all these ngos or the kutumbasri they are having this entrepreneurship development model and they are delivering good result so this is a model which can be expanded which can be leveraged i told you how our small micro entrepreneur are not aware of schemes and programs so there is an organization called hagdarshak in this hagdarshak they have trained a cadre of women if, if you can see the picture every women has got a smartphone so this hagdarshak has created a small app in this app if you will put some little bit information about family size income etc etc the app will tell you what all government schemes and programs for which you are eligible for so this trained women are going door to door to bpl family below poverty line families poor families and they are collecting little bit information and they are telling these families look these are the schemes programs which you can avail and we will help you to get that schemes and programs so this is another important initiative that can be expanded that can be leveraged in other parts of the country for a strong ecosystem especially for rural enterprise development local institutions panchayat can play a very big role so the empowerment of local institutions like panchayat will be an important ingredient of that robust ecosystem many of you must be aware how during this lockdown and pandemic time the panchayat and the members of panchayat not only run quarantine center they delivered 
distributed food medicine door to door they also maintain maintain law and order and those who are not aware i can share with you that the odisha government the government of odisha during this pandemic time they gave they gave the power of district collector to the sarpanch to the panchayat member panchayat sarpanch panchayat head so you can imagine the kind of responsibility and trust they have earned during this pandemic time and the least that this panchayat can do is that they can profile they can do a mapping exercise the kind of small micro women led enterprises are operating in that area they can engage with engage with them and try to find out what kind of constraints they are facing and whether they have they are finding it difficult to restart their uh, unit etc etc and panchayat in partnership with other institutions in rural area uh, you will find ngos you will find state rural livelihood missions many corporate sector are also working under csr so all these organizations if they join hand and work hand in hand and then uh, we will see sustainable rural enterprise development there is a lot of scope for this public private partnership also so that is also an area to be looked at uh, besides this there are so many small little initiative that we have seen for example the government of gujarat they signed mou with amazon to help 10000 tribal entrepreneurs so you can imagine so then amazon itself they started a initiative called stand for handmade initiative to help 10 lakh weavers artisans women entrepreneurs in india so there are many uh, small little initiative from where we can learn and we can explore how this kind of initiative can be replicated how more and more enterprises can get help from this kind of initiative during this pandemic time as i was telling new schemes programs have been initiated the central government's msme package of 20 lakh crore pm garib kalyan rozgar yojana for the reverse migrant for the street vendors there is a program called pm swanidhi scheme and during this pandemic time many state governments have also announced for example andhra pradesh they in announced a relief package restart package of 1110 crore rupees on may 22nd 2020 for msme they also announced that they will directly buy the government the public sector enterprises will directly buy 360 item manufactured by exclusively msme so like that in many other country for example uttar pradesh they started a up covid emergency financial support scheme to encourage new industries in manufacturing of covid 19 related medical equipment so in uttar pradesh they also started a msme sathi mobile app where you can communicate with the gov- uh, administration about grievances and all that so many new initiatives uh, have come and uh, but the question is whether the schemes and programs whether people are aware or not if at all they are aware whether uh, they get benefit from or need not and the whole digital empowerment it is a welcome move but if you will see the internet penetration especially in rural area is just 33% and the use of smartphone it was only 9% in rural area in 2015 but it has gone up to 25% in 2018 so there is there also there are areas remote areas where there is no internet connection so you can ask this question how entrepreneur operating in those areas can access to this digital uh, these schemes and programs which are now provided on platforms it enable portals it enable dash dashboards and all that so taking all this one can say that in future we may have more challenges than opportunities but for better understanding what kind of challenges these entrepreneurs are facing how they will address those challenges we need good quality of today data which is not there so unless we collect data unless we do a good mapping or profiling exercise of this existing entrepreneur existing enterprises 
understand their pain points constraints what kind of difficulties they are facing and then based on that if we formulate schemes and programs then it is going to reach to them or else there will be schemes and programs tomorrow another 10 20 programs will come and again we will have the same discussion that people are not aware about this people are not able to access from that and all that and we also have to think about something called vulnerability assessment framework what is vulnerability assessment framework this msme this enterprise sector is very huge and heterogeneous in terms of size location type of technology used number of workers exposure to global market you will have some enterprises who are exporting we will have some small enterprises who are operating in the local market and they are depending only on the local market so different type of enterprises at different type of constraints to understand that different kinds of vulnerability so to understand that diverse variety of difficulties vulnerability you have to collect data to uh, design a vulnerability framework many of these enterprises are still struggling to restart their activity so can we prepare a business continuity plan how to restart your activity so we can help small enterprise small medium enterprises in help them to prepare a business continuity plan in addition to that i have already shared the importance of collective access to shared services it is very important another important aspect is lean manufacturing many of this msme small micro entrepreneurs they do not operate effectively maybe they are using electricity more their cost of production is unnecessarily high maybe they are not able to manage their hr uh, rationally and all that so another scheme of ministry of msme is called lean manufacturing so how to reduce cost how to properly uh, manage the hr personal management how to utilize the space in a better way how to reduce wastages how to use energy uh, economically all these are very important and the Uh, before i end i must say that all these departments that we have multiple ministries multiple departments if they will not coordinate with each other so a well coordinated institutions department and if all these support services will be provided on single window then uh, i will say that we are moving on a right direction we are moving on a direct direction of sustainable uh, enterprise development there are many inspiring stories those students may like it that if you can see on your computer screen on the the first picture is a person called bhavesh bhatia he is a differently able person a blind person but he is he is running a multi crore candle manufacturing business in mahabaleshwar maharashtra so the second person is called dharambir kamboj who was a rickshaw puller but he has innovated a multi purpose food processing machine so you can imagine the third and last is that this lady called chumki datta she is also a differently able person but she is running a self help group center come a training center so in her training center they are not only providing training and capacity development to persons with disability that too with intellectual disability and uh, they are also making different kinds of products like natural handmade soaps handmade packs incense sticks scented candles etc etc so there are many inspiring story from where the aspiring entrepreneur the youth the students who are thinking to start a new enterprises they can learn a lot of uh, lessons they can get lot of inspirations from this inspiring story so with this uh, let me stop here and if there are any question uh, observation comments criticism all are welcome thank you very much for your time and patience uh, back to the college back to the uh, dr k banita thank you sir like any questions from students uh, 
thank you sir uh, uh, truly your uh, presentation was thought provoking and uh, enlighten us uh, as you said we we are not uh, aware of all these programs so one uh, out of the curiosity only one thing i want to point towards you is uh, how these uh, training sessions will be there for the students so that they can uh, Uh, those who are uh, heading towards entrepreneurship how you can help us with this training sessions at your center that's what i want to know that's it yeah so uh, at nird we do not provide training directly to students we provide to training to trainers we provide training to people who are working with rural development departments ngos who are implementing different schemes and programs but Uh, a lot of students visit our rural technology park we have a rural technology park where more than 20 25 live demonstration of uh, entrepreneurship models are there like beekeeping uh, mushroom uh, aromatic oil different kinds of housing models all that so i would uh, sincerely request you to send your students for an exposure visit to rural technology park and we can also think of collaborating and uh, designing special training program for students so that option is also open uh, we can discuss on that uh, that's great Thank sir you. Uh, you said uh, trainers trainers in the sense uh, we faculty can be a trainer uh, what are the yeah, guidelines yeah 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 so uh, faculty can very well uh, Uh, attend our training program and since last more than one year we are organizing online training program and in all this training program uh, i have found uh, academician faculty members teachers from colleges and university they are all attending our program great sir and thank you and uh, we look forward to attend those sessions right thank yeah. you yeah so uh, all our programs announcement are uploaded on the our nird website so anyone who is interested to participate not only on entrepreneurship related but there are whole lot of other issues related to rural development they can just uh, uh, register they can is open for all uh, good afternoon sahu sir Uh, yes, this is Swani. Actually, in our college, we have conducted lot of uh, entrepreneur development programs, sir. Actually, but uh, we have asked rural develop uh, rural people to uh, prepare jute bags and incense sticks, but we cannot make them as entrepreneurs. Sir. That is uh, big question, big task. Yeah, yeah. So I yes, started sir. with how. Yeah, I started saying with that how people are. starting enterprises but they are not able to market their product they are not able to grow so to help those kind of enterprises their schemes and programs so our responsibility is to connect these people with that respective schemes and programs and there are other channels let us understand why their products are not being marketed why there is no demand is it because the cost production is high prices are not competitive or quality is quality is a question so all this we have to understand and if we know the problem we can uh, provide the solution so uh, for example packaging is a very important aspect and the rural located enterprises they are not able to package they are they are not able to produce a qualitative product so all these constraints are there but those people can be helped those people can be supported there are initiative not only from the government but also ngos are also working so we have to connect these people with those kinds of schemes and programs and those formal institutions i can say that's much as of now sir Uh, we are part of ub also sir for the past 2 years we have been conducting some programs in the adopted villages but we are not able to uh, motivate the people for the enterprise development sir actually when we conduct the programs they, they are coming and they are going but they are not showing interest so that is yeah. the main problem sir yeah yeah, yeah. i have been taking sessions in various uba 
program I, the same issue has cropped up again and again so we have to continuously engage with them there is no other way and we have to understand their we have to read their mind on which they are interested on what kind of activities they have got some skill and capacity what is their aspiration so we have to read their mind and we have to continuously engage with them that's all i can say let us not dump any idea on them so we should help facilitate help them to think help them to come up with their own idea we can only we should only encourage so that we should go with a free open mind sir what is the procedure sir for the rural development park visit like we would like to come along with our students yeah please drop an email i will coordinate yeah any questions yeah thank you thank you very much sir for accepting our invitation and spending your valuable time sir you have given very much insight sir definitely we will look into that msme website and will our students will like they are showing some interest sir for enterprise development i will encourage them to msme sir thank you thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you very much thank you for your time invitation patience and goodbye thank you thank you sir goodbye sir